Hello and good afternoon. We are here with all the important topics right before the U.S. stock market rings the bell. The Biden administration has proposed a new regulation requiring U.S. cloud service providers like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google to actively monitor and report foreign clients, particularly those from China, developing artificial intelligence applications on their platforms. This proposal, set to be released on a Monday, mandates these companies to disclose foreign customers' identities and IP addresses and to establish a budget for this surveillance, echoing the stringent know-your-customer rules in the financial industry. This move aims to curb Chinese firms' access to essential data centers and servers needed for AI training and hosting, intensifying the tech conflict between the U.S. and China. The U.S. government is concerned about the national security threats posed by AI development, especially in the hands of non-allied entities, and seeks to limit AI's potential military uses by foreign actors. While there might be exceptions for the foreign subsidiaries of U.S. cloud providers, the proposal is part of a broader strategy to contain China's technological advancements, which includes recent tightened controls on chip exports and sanctions on Chinese tech firms. Shell's exit from Nigeria's onshore oil sector, part of a broader trend involving major Western and Chinese oil companies like Exxon, ENI, Equinor, and Adax, underscores the challenges in Africa's largest oil exporter. The Niger Delta, plagued by pollution, oil theft, and pipeline vandalism, has deterred investment and reduced production, affecting Nigeria's economy. Shell's divestment to local firms reflects a shift towards offshore operations due to these onshore risks. Andrew Matheny of Goldman Sachs attributes the decline in oil production to Nigeria's problematic oil sector policies and investment constraints. Despite President Bola Tinubu's efforts to address these challenges since taking office, the ongoing asset sales highlight significant changes in the sector. While local companies like CPLAT, First E and P and Heritage have seen some success in increasing production and reducing oil spills, others struggle with infrastructure issues. Industry experts believe that local firms, despite financial limitations compared to oil majors, might boost production due to their willingness to invest, supported by local and international financing, albeit at higher costs. Ryanair, Europe's largest airline by passenger numbers, has expressed interest in acquiring Boeing 737 MAX 10 aircraft that may be rejected by U.S. customers. The airline, which already has 150 firm orders and options for another 150 of the MAX 10, anticipates the jet certification by year-end and operational start in early 2025. This interest comes despite the recent safety concerns following an incident with a MAX 9 jet operated by Alaska Airlines. Ryanair's move was prompted by United Airlines CEO Scott Kirby's announcement of potentially excluding the MAX 10 from their fleet plans due to regulatory and delivery delays. Michael O'Leary, Ryanair Group's CEO, praised the MAX 10 as transformational but noted the need for improved quality from Boeing. CFO Neil Sorahan, while acknowledging the recent comments by Kirby as unhelpful, reaffirmed Ryanair's commitment to the MAX series, including the high-density MAX 8, 8,200 variant. Ryanair, with a current fleet of 574 jets, including 136 MAX 8S, plans to expand its fleet with up to 210 MAX 8S and 300 MAX 10S, emphasizing their confidence in the MAX as a cornerstone of their growth strategy. This is all we have for you today. We are Mexum TV, and we will be here next week, same place, same time. Goodbye.